thank you. So, hello you all. Such a great pleasure to be here today to talk about this topic. Uh, I'm not an expert though, so it's just something I've been learning since a couple of months ago, and I'd like to share some thoughts and learnings uh, with this one. So, just to get started, uh, that's it, the cover of the presentation. And just a little bit about myself, like this is the background. So, I'm already working for the ones who don't know me. I, I'm a software engineer, I've been working here since a couple of, since 2020, since 2020, I guess. And before everything, I have worked in a range of segments, like commerce, uh, urban mobility, transportation. And here for everything, I've been working with ads, with retail, and also for platforms. And go nodes, Kubernetes, containers, it's like a, something I really love. By the way, this PC board here at the right, you guys are seeing something I've built by my own. It's using an 8-bit AVR microcontroller that you can write firmware using C, C++, or even assembly if you want. So from time to time, I'd like to play with this kind of stuff. And if you'd like to be in touch with me and check some crazy things like this one, just check out my GitHub. Yeah, I have some things about that. So that's it. So moving forward to the topic today, I have split the, the presentation in four sections. The first one to just understand like what is WebAssembly. The second one is when is it worth using? And the third one is to check the tool, the state of tools available for like what should I use to implement a, an app using WebAssembly. And the final section will be a concrete example using C, like it's it's a web app written in C and not fully in JavaScript. So something I have to do. So uh, first things first, what is WebAssembly, uh, we may say it was introduced uh, by the World Web Consortium a couple of years ago to be the fourth langu language of the web. So it's a language alongside of JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. But even though it's a language, you probably won't be writing code into this thing because it's not so human friendly, let me put this way. So instead, you'll be using it as a compilation target. So being more technical, uh, we can say that WebAssembly, it's a compilation target that you can use to compile a language of your choice to this thing. So for instance, imagine that you have a C code like this one. Uh, it's a very simple code. It's just checking whether or not a number, a given number is even. Uh, at the left, we have uh, the C implementation that you guys would implement. And at the right, you can see the WASMI equivalent compiled code. Actually, it's not the dot wasmi per C. It's more of a wasmi text file, which is more human readable. If you guys know a little bit about assembly, it may look like familiar and it's intentional. And the same example in Go uh, is this one, so pretty much the same program. And this is the equivalent code here. So that's it. Uh, so just to summarize how the process fully works, just imagine that you have to write something in using WebAssembly. In a few minutes, we'll see why. And you just have to write the code as well as you re re uh, you regularly write this thing in Go, Rust, C. You compile it as you as you were compiling like to any other uh, situations, and it will generate the dot wasm file, which is the the file that we can put to the WASM VM and it to translate it to machine code like the ARM or x86, which is the, the baby on the on the device uh, in which the user is using your web app. And something very important to point is that uh, WebAssembly is not a, a replacement for JavaScript. It's not meant to be something like that. But yet, it, it means to be a complementary tool that you can use to build applications uh, that require uh, that requires really high speed in performance. And it leads us to the next part of the talk, which is like, when is it worth using it? The answer is very straightforward. It's like, once you really requires performance. So once performance is a critical thing in your system, like really, really, really critical thing, WebAssembly is a thing that really shines. Uh, in which kind of applications, just in case you would like to, 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 to just imagine, Real-time video processing, complex like, like, uh, apps that re that perf perform some kind of complex mathematical computation, uh, real-time games, and for sure, compute-aided 
design applications and you see uh, one example in a few minutes. So once performance is a thing, WebAssembly is something that you would like to consider using it. So um, like in terms of performance per se, uh, I said before, like WASM is not something that you'll be using to validate a form. For instance, JavaScript does it perfectly for us and that's enough. But WebAssembly was designed to offer a near native speed uh, for the apps compiled using it. Uh, it can be it can be done uh, due to a few factors, a, a, a few due to a few points. Like for instance, the the binary format it uh, it compiles like the dot plasma I have mentioned before, and also due to the fact that it employs ahead of time compile. So uh, due to that, uh, the average apps performance. Uh, fluctuations is not something that varies too much. They tend to be more, more controlled at the same way. And also, uh, uh, and also, be, besides the constant performance, for sure, the Indian native execution uh, is something that we get uh, by using so. So, um, there are some scenarios in which, in which, perf uh, in which, ensuring. Consistent performance is a critical thing. Uh, just take a look at this 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 benchmark performance here, and you guys can see the the source of it. You can see that depending on some variations of the platform operational system and browser configuration, the speed of a JavaScript app can vary. In some of them, the variations are a little bit higher than other ones that are a little bit lower, but Depending on the use case of this thing, this distinction between between those performances may impact in the user. For instance, imagine uh, an online game where you are playing with your friend. Uh, this difference between the two browsers running into different things may impact in something that you are doing during the game. And I'm not even talking about the network overhead that for sure uh, makes things even worse. So for sure. This is not the regular situation for an average app, like pretty much in the, the kind of job I do in day to day. It's not something um, that would you that would both use it, but for some things like this, it's something really nice to consider using. And another aspect alongside of the performance is the memory management. Uh, JavaScript apps, they 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 by default carry some kind of a garbage collector mechanism, which is constantly looking for objects, uh, objects that are no longer referenced, and then, and then it performs a cleanup to avoid memory issues and that kind of thing. In WASMI, on the other hand, um, you have, depending on the language you choose, for instance, C or C++, you can have full control of memory allocation in the allocation, and this is nice because Garbage uh, during garbage collectors, the application process must be paused to the garbage collector being performance. If you are using, for instance, an app in C where you alloc a memory, the deallocation must be done by yourself. Uh, for sure, you have to take care of some cases where you leave memory, where you allocate memory, and you forget to the, to to release that. Uh, but for sure, there are some tools that you can use to to inspect such scenarios and avoid it. So just to give a concrete example about uh, what it means, uh, just imagine this uh, JavaScript code at the left. So it's doing nothing fancy, just attribute, just creating two variables, the, the name and the user. And the one of the mechanisms that JavaScript may use, uh, depending, for sure it may vary depending on which version and where it's running. But one of the algorithms that that JavaScript has is the mark swap. So basically, depending on the context where those variables are defined, uh, we have some kind of a reference pointing to them. So for instance, Alan Terry and Edgar Dexter, those those uh, those objects here, they have a reference to them. But just imagine that we reassign the values of name and user to other variables. Those initial objects they are no longer being referenced by anyone so in the process of uh, in which the garbage coll garbage collector uh, checks if they are being referenced or not they will be marketed as no longer in use and during the next collection they will be pushed 
and will no longer be used. So in a language that uses a garbage collection like JavaScript, um, Java, and other ones, this usually is the, uh, is the, how it works. For sure, they are they have some some difference. But in the case of a language like uh, in which you do not have a garbage collector, for instance, in C, things are a little bit different. So for instance, this code here at the left, it's basically allocating a vector, like nothing fancy again, at line six, and it's uh, assigning some values to those items, as you can see here, and then it's, pr it's printing those values, nothing fancy. But the problem is, once this function returns, uh, it's not releasing the memory we have allocated to create the numbered vectors here. So we are pretty much creating a memory leak here. Fortunately, solving this is a rather easy task. We just have to free the, the memory, like this one. And, uh, and, and again, like you have, even though uh, we have full control of memory uh, by using a language like this one, we have to take care of such situations to avoid, to avoid issues. So it's a trade-off, like garbage collector. Uh, it's good because it keeps us focused on what matters to the, to the to the product, to the business, but uh, in case we need to do some bit fiddling, uh, knowing how to allocate and the allocate memory, it's something important too. Uh, okay, but who is using it? You may guess like uh, from time to time, uh, once I talk to, to some folks about this thing, uh, it's common people ask like, like, it's anyone even using this thing? Like even into this, uh, this quote in Reddit, like so you, as you can see, some people are even asking what is WebAssembly. And a few months ago, a guy in Twitter asked, like, <laughs> he said that he still couldn't find a, a use for Wasm. I answered them the sharing an app I did. It's also available there. And due to that, in due to this Twitter here of this guy, I decided to to at least create some. So this is this is the this presentation here. I didn't mean to. <laughs> presented today because it was before. But uh, once I heard about the, te the tech week, I decided oh, why not present it there, so it was nice. But uh, answering, like, yes, for sure, there are, are plenty of people using this thing. And one of the interesting things you have is Figma. Figma is a tool that pretty much every everyone here knows. Um, they started using it a couple of years ago and great outcomes they, they got by adopting such technology was that the load time, like it's just three times faster, as you can see here by the graph in this survey they they did. And also source here, you can check the details uh, of it. And also something that that's it's really nice, especially specifically for, for an app like Figma, is that um, user has to use the user needs only to cache the, the user needs only to access the uh, the app like Figma for instance for the first time. And in the first time, uh, the machine code for the specific user device is already compiled. So the next, the next time, and so on, uh, this process of getting the proper machine code is avoided because things are already there, and then it's cached. So this is something really nice. Uh, so here you have a use case like it's just in our day to day. I didn't know about that, and that's it. So besides Figma. Uh, there are other uh, other products using this one, uh, like Kong uh, AutoCAD. The AutoCAD is a is a is an interesting case, by the way, because it's it's a more than twenty years old code base written in C plus and those guys could bring it to the web using WebAssembly. So really nice, and also the the client of MongoDB, which is the Atlas. I use it, and I didn't know about that. Okay, so that being said, like. What's was me uh, when it's worth using it? It like once performance is really something important. Uh, it was nice to check about the state of available tools we have over there to use this thing. So I decided to just focus on three main languages here: C plus plus, C, and Go, uh, because they are something I I could experiment by myself. For sure, I could talk about Rust, but I not I don't have too much experience in Rust, so. I couldn't uh, get in the details of it. So starting with Go, Go has support by default. So it requires no external installation, no external tool, nothing. If you want, if you want to spin up something in Wasm using Go, just have to write 
legal code and compile it to WebAssembly. So a quick example here, uh, it's an app that, that I answered the guy on Twitter, is to find prime numbers. It basically implements the sieve of Eratosthenes, an algorithm to find prime numbers inside of an interval. And the basic idea is, for the ones who know a little bit of Go, is just defining some kind of a uh, placeholder for your function that properly implements uh, what you're trying to achieve. And at the JavaScript layer, we can call it as it was a JavaScript function. So it's very easy. And also the compilation, as I say, it requires no external things. So I'm just running the Go build, main, the yara, 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 but passing uh, as arguments the Go arc and Go OS and Go does all the job for us. Perfect, it's live here. If you would like to check it by your own and actually see the source code, just go ahead, it's there. Um, for C and C++ is an interesting case. Uh, it doesn't have a native support like Go, for instance, but fortunately, we have a few options available. And scripting from the ones I could see seems to be the, the most interesting one, at least in terms of installation and mainly in terms of documentation. Like it's really nice in terms of what can it use. It's, you just basically asks, uh, just, you just basically have to search what you're trying to do and you have some snippets or whatever that you can copy paste. Um, installation is a rather easy process. It's if you, in case you would like to, to check, it, just go ahead. And as an example here for sure, like it's just a very simple C code, which is just receiving as argument an array. An, an array and its length and compile and, and it's just summing all the values into a variable and then return this thing. Um, the compilation is a little bit similar to what you'll be doing using C, using the GCC, uh, but instead you're using the AMCC, like the M script of C compiler. So you just have to pass some arguments here. Uh, do not do not mind about the details of this thing for for now, for now at least, but. Uh, in the end, the output will be this kind of file here, uh, which is the one you'll be loading here in your JavaScript layer to, uh, to execute the WASM part. So that's it. For C and C++, MScripting uh, uh, can support both languages. As said for easy is very, uh, the user the usage is very straightforward. So that's it. And so as a practical example, here, just to not be, uh, just not stay in the theoretical part. I'd like to show to show something I have built just to experiment this this tool here, which was a file compressor. So the first reason to build one is because it's fun. Like, why not build one? And the second one is like being a being more straightforward is because I I found it as a good way to effectively check uh, the challenges between putting something in production using WASM and the, the challenges that we may have by passing data from JavaScript to the C layer and from the C layer to the quote unquote JavaScript layer. So that's it. So about a little bit about the details, not going too much into code because we don't have enough time, but um, the basic idea, it's the human coding. So as it's a compressor, it's, it's just, getting files and compressing them using the Hoffman code. The algorithm idea is a little bit straightforward. You just have to collect uh, a set of symbols. You just have to count the frequencies of the symbols. You sort them uh, by the frequencies, and then uh, you get to, in two by two, create a binary tree, that stuff. So you, if you would like to see it uh, in a visual form, you can, have this we can check this example here just imagine that we would like to to compress this phrase here like coding is fun and fun is coding so if we count up if we count the the frequencies of symbols we will end up having this thing here and the first step of the algorithm as we said before is just sorting so by sorting it you get this thing the next step is get things in pairs so the first one would be a one c two because they are the lowest values and then we create a binary tree using them. And the rule is the lower values go to the left and the high values go to the right. So we create this small tree here and we put it back into the list like this one. Next step is get the lowest one. So F2 and G2, 
create the tree, put it back, and now O2 and S2, create the tree, put it back, O2, add tree, create the tree, yada, 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 and we continue. We, we're moving forward with this process until we reach a stage in which the very um, tree is built with only uh, one hood, like this one. So that's it. Uh, so once the tree is built, the next step is marking uh, the jumps uh, using some kind of logic. So for instance, I, I jump, we can say that I jump to the left would mean zero and I jump to the right would mean one. So by putting those jumps here into the, into the tree, we can now uh, build the corresponding path for a symbol. So for instance, if you would like to represent A uh, using this, mm, this symbol here, we would have one, one, O, oh, one, O. Oh. By plotting them together, we have this thing here, and we are now able to rewrite the original phrase, code is fun, and fun is coding this way. So coding is fun, and fun is coding in the compressed file, let me put this way, would, would be this sequence of zeros and ones here. So if we compare the original uh, text with this compressed one, we can see it's, 58% uh, smaller than the original one. So our work is a little bit nice, as you can see. So it's effective. The compression is really effective. For sure, for real products like WinHar, for instance, you, do, you just don't use Huffman. You use Huffman alongside with other algorithms. Uh, about the app itself, like once you we went through the algorithm, it looks a little bit like this, a little bit messy, but don't worry, trust with me. So. Uh, imagine that you have the user device here and it has the browser in which the user will uh, access the, the website to get the web app to run. So uh, the app has two main layers, let me put this way. So the first one will deal with the user interaction. So it has the JavaScript, HTML, and CSS part. And the compression, the compression is written in C. So this, this area here can deal with forms, input, validation, yada, 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 is done in JavaScript while the compression the compression is c okay so the first part is the compression so to compress a file we first have to collect the user file and once you collect the user file that was things get interesting because we have to allocate some memory uh into the into the into the app and collect the bytes of the file there and then it gives us a pointer to this file so in, was in the Wasm world, the, we may say that there is no objects, like we cannot just pass a JavaScript object to the Wasm. It has no point. But Wasm knows numbers and pointers. So this is something that we can use. So if I want to pass a vector from JavaScript layer to the Wasm layer, we can pass the pointer itself pointing to the bytes in, uh, in which we have allocated the, the file, like for instance, just one, two, and just one, two, three, and four alongside with the length. So if we know this pointer is pointed to the bytes of the, of the file, and if we know that the length of, the, of the, the bytes is, it has four bytes, we can iterate through all the content. Then uh, once it performs the, comp the, the compression, as it cannot just return the array back to the JavaScript layer, we, had, uh, we return the length of the file. So showing code, maybe it gets more, uh, maybe it makes more sense. Uh, we have just the these three main files here. So this first one uh, at the right is it runs at the JavaScript layer. So it's basically allocating some memory here. And as you can see, we are using C functions. They, like they are not, um, let me put this way, JavaScript like C functions. They were literally exported from C to the Wasm uh, during the compilation time. So. It's precisely due to that that we are allocating some values here using the malloc, uh, and the length of this array is the length of the file in which the user has uploaded to compress it. Uh, and then we perform this C calls here at uh, this point. At, uh, oh, sure. I, I see my my cursor is not correct, but whatever. At this first arrow, as this first green arrow here, we are calling the compression this function at the at the left passing as argument the pointer pointing to the start at the beginning of the of the, the sequence of bytes of the file which the user um, has uploaded and after the compression 
as you can see, we collect the size uh, of the compressed file, and then uh, we allocate a buffer having this this length, and we call C again to collect the compressed file here. And for sure, at the at the end, we have to free the allocated the allocated uh, pointers. Otherwise, we end up, we may end up having memory leaks. So we have to do this thing not only in the quote unquote JavaScript layer, but also at the C layer, the, the compile. And that's it. That's the the basic idea and how it works. And about the uh, in some, uh, something really interesting to point here. Uh, it's about the the garbage the, the garbage collector stuff because I said before that um, if you decide to use something uh, to use a kind of language in which you don't have a garbage collector uh, by default, like C for instance, you have to manually allocate memory as we are doing this one to collect this symbols code good variable here, and at the end you have to free. So we are by doing so we have full control of memory. This is nice, uh, but again, just have to take care of allocating memory and then helis is. The decompression part, it's pretty much the same thing here, but it works in the reverse in the reverse uh, process. So right now the user uploads the, decom the decompressed file and we have to decompress to get the original file. But the idea is pretty much the same. Just imagine that the user had uploaded files, we collect the sequence of bytes it has, because again, uh, WASM does not understand strings, or objects, the unseen numbers and pointers. So we call uh, we create a buffer have, uh, to, to to carry the bytes of the compressed files, and we pass it to the quote unquote C layer, having the decompressor the decompressor uh, code. It decompresses as outcomes. It receives the the length of the the compressed file, and then we can again call the C part to collect the the original file passing a buffer to be filled with the bytes. Uh, so it's similar to the first one. Again, we are receiving the, the, the file in which the user uh, had uploaded and call no? it's the C code to perform the decompression and then collecting the, this, the length of the original file, which is the decompressed file and calling uh, the collect the compressed content, passing a buffer to receive the original file to then uh, hit on the prompts with the uh, with the original file which the user can download in in its device. And again, other point interesting to show is uh, again in the in terms of memory management, we can see that we are just receiving the bytes of the file. So, like it's just an array as you can see here. Um, we can control in which parts in which index be more precisely things are. So for instance, uh, uh, just a detail about, about how it was implemented. Uh, the, first, uh, the, first, the first two bytes uh, of, the, of this content here, I used it to create some kind of a header to give me a clue about where the, the tree content actually starts and where the, comp the, the compressor part actually starts. So, if I have this the, this pointer here pointing to a contiguous space in memory, having the bytes, I'm just pointing specifically to the index in which the the, the content of the tree starts, and besides it, like uh, we are we have the the compressed symbols, so we are not doing any crazy stuff here. We are just pointing to the proper places in memory, and this is nice to be done. Uh, and that's it. So if you'd like to try it out, uh, links here, not only the links, but also the source code, you can check it, run into your machine. If you find some bugs for sure, feel free to open up a, a pull request and that's it. Uh, if you'd like to, to go into, uh, if you'd like to have a further reading about stuff, which is really nice, those links might be interesting uh, to you. And that's it. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, just feel free.